Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank, laboring once again on yeah. Labor Day with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo from our palatial studios here at WDAY as we get ready for Game 2 of this 2023 season, the home opener for North Dakota State against the Maine Black Bears. We're going to have a story later this week. This game was supposed to happen 22 years ago as we near the 22nd anniversary of the September 11th attacks. That game, Jeffrey, was postponed and eventually canceled because of what happened in New York City. Uh, that was a, for people that don't remember, that was a highlight game on the calendar. At Maine was a top, it was an FCS team. The Bison were still Division II at that time, and they were coming to Fargo. Well, we'll never forget that week, as of course yeah, a right. lot of people will never forget that week. But uh, when I look back, I, I think about that was the game where, okay, they were 1AA then, mm -hmm. a little history. That was going to be the first matchup of a Division II versus a Division or a 1AA team. And we didn't know the difference. We didn't know the comparison. We didn't know the difference in talent level. We knew nothing yeah. of that. And this was going to be a great test. The Bison were going to go in with a pretty good team. Lamar Garden was a star running yeah. back, and they, they, they had some players. The Bison had some players. I know now looking back, what would have happened? I think it would have been a pretty good game. Yeah. Yep. Because we've seen since then now comparisons of, of Division Two uh, 20 years ago this week was the yeah. Montana game. So you know that a good Division Two program can probably measure up to a pretty good FCS as a good FCS program can beat an FBS program. Right. Just fun to look back on, on that. And now Maine, here they are. They'll be here, and we'll get to the Black Bears in just a second. I want to unpack a little bit more because we now have actual game tape of mm -hmm. what happened for the first game of the season. Uh, I mentioned this on the news on Saturday night. It's one game, but it certainly looked like to me that the Bison defense had its swagger back that we are accustomed to from years past that was lacking last year. From Cole Wisniewski and Logan Kopp leading the charge, Cody Iceman had, had a sack in the game. That's the Bison defense that fans are accustomed to. It felt like, it felt like Cole Wisniewski took over just fine for Michael no. Tutsi and or Dawson Weber. It felt like Logan Kopp had more of an active linebacker game than maybe we saw all of last I year. I totally agree with that. He, he was just, he was, look at him, he was just all over the place. He was uh, one of those guys that, you know, here, oh, here comes a play, and that was a big play, by the way, uh, late in the second half with, with Wisniewski taking that uh, interception. He's 6'4", we saw it there. We <laughs> yeah. saw the advantage of being 6'4", right there. Well, I think you make a great point. Uh, between... The, the the play at the linebacker spot was Look at that, the, that, hit. that hit there. You just that's we did not see that last year. The 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 playmaking ability out of that spot, which NDSU is so used to, that was not there in 2023. It was there in Spades, big time Wayla in Saturday's win. And it's not really a surprise so much with Logan Cop. I think we've seen and heard about the potential for two always years. being yeah. oh, for two years. Yeah. And I always thought, that, okay, this is maybe his third year in. This yep. is maybe the year it's when players yep. really take that next step. Now, I know it's one game. I understand it's one game. But I think Logan Cop, to me, reminded me. Uh, me of a, a little Travis Beck like the mm. way the way he's all over the field and and knocking passes around and, and and really having the speed to close I mean I thought he just really closed well and just being around the ball I mean it, it sounds yeah. easy but it's hard to do and and I thought he was fabulous at it on I, Saturday. They, and the secondary I thought they had one play that fourth down uh, touchdown that Eastern Washington got in the first quarter that the secondary somebody got behind them. I thought all in all, I thought Wisniewski aside, we know how well he did. I thought the rest of the secondary had a really solid game. Against a couple of uh, Eastern Washington receivers yeah. who were pretty good. I mean, and they're tight end. Chisholm the third. Six, six. Chisholm the yep. third is, it was a quality receiver. Yep. And I can see why he's going to be some sort of all big he's sky do, yep. first or second yep. team. I think he's got that potential. Quarterback was a, was a definite run pass threat. But the rush defense, and we, we preached about it coming into this season, that they got to be better oh, at man. run defense. Uh, they, and they gave out 53 yards. Yeah. <laughs> Their defensive line came in spades. I yeah. mean, they, they looked really, really sharp, I thought, on Saturday. Uh, this topic we talked about on the Bison Media Zone show on Extra Wednesday, and it's not going to go away after what happened Saturday. Cole Payton's performance, throwing the ball aside, which, again, it, it's nothing to diminish. But his playmaking ability on that touchdown run cannot be ignored, and this is only going to get amplified of, of him getting into the game as we go forward. Well, and I've elevated my status on how he's as a runner. I don't think there's many runners at a quarterback position Look better in the FCS, yeah. Dom. Yeah. Now he's 6'3", 230, and running away from that corner. Look at that. Yeah. He, he ran away from a guy 
almost had the angle on him, and, and all of a sudden he's out of the frame. This run here to start the second half. I mean, he jukes a guy there and yeah. gets back in. I mean, gets another seven, eight yards after that. That, that explosiveness Cam Miller can't bring to the table. It, it's just a fact. And Tyler Roll has to find a way to get this guy onto the field as often as possible. But knowing he needs some rhythm because the, the one pass he completed was a little dunk to Jacob Streit that uh, his one down the field, he short-armed. He's got he's to gotta get better at that. There's no doubt. I thought handing the keys to him at the start of the second yep. half was, was a pretty good confidence no builder and saying, okay, Cam, nope. or okay, Cole, this is, this is your series. You're going to start the second half for us and, and, and see what you can do. And he did, he pulled off that run. Yeah. But then uh, there's some uh, breakdown of protection yep. on a pass where he was sacked and that stalled the drive. I We don't know if he can throw again. I mean, I've said it like 75 <laughs> times now in two weeks, but – uh, I'm just, uh, you have to put him on the field, just like Quincy Patterson a couple yeah. of years ago. You got to find a way to use him. I don't know if you can throw him in a, in, in sort of a multi Swiss army knife. Like, well, do you throw him at a tight end a little, do you flank him out? You, you, you saw you that get the guy, the ball, right. you saw that package. That was the Delta package of yeah. guys in the backfield and Eastern didn't know which guy to take. And it was the quarterback and 70 yards later is in the end zone for a touchdown. Get him the damn ball. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> as Keyshawn Johnson yeah. would say. All right, the main Black Bears are one of the 90 teams in the now Coastal Athletic Association. Uh, Make sure track. you write that this week. It's no longer the Colonial. It is the Coastal Athletic Association. They when did that happen, by the way? It happened earlier this summer. They decided yeah. to switch that. It so. was kind of quiet, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a huge yeah, news it was on awesome. that. No. Well, so changing leagues, what's a big deal? Five, year, five years ago, Maine was a semifinalist, lost to Eastern Washington. They were a whisker away of making it to the national championship game. Since then, they have fallen on hard times. A program that won two football games last year. Jordan Stevens is in his second year as head coach. They nearly shocked Florida International last week. They lost 14 to 12 in their FBS game. I, they're still a great unknown to me. I, I, I'm not really sure what kind of football team we're gonna get here on Saturday afternoon. They've retooled defensively, Dom, and, and that's where you really gotta start if you wanna contend for anything in the playoffs when it comes to FCS mm -hmm. and holding Florida, Florida International to what was it, 13, <laughs> 13 yards, yards rushing? rushing yeah. Granted, Florida International is all about uh, throwing the ball, but uh, that, I don't care who you are holding a team to 13 yeah. yards. That's it's got to yep. say something, yeah. doesn't it? I, they are. They got their work cut out for them. I'd say that in the league where certainly it's top heavy. We know William and Mary is really good. Delaware thinks that they've got uh, some pieces. Villanova's certainly been in the mix as well. Uh, after that, we've talked about this in the CAA between four to, all the way down to 11. It's a, and Maine is hoping there's somewhere in the mix in that. We don't know. Race. I mean, no, like, right. Okay. Rhode Island, right. where's Rhode Island? Rhode Island's I mean, always, always see, thinking they're in there. You know, where's Richmond? Elon. We saw Richmond. Richmond here at the dome several years ago. Richmond just got beat by Morgan state. That's, that's not a that good a, loss for the that's CAA. A horrible that's loss. a really bad loss. Your Richmond's league, a ranked team. Your league cannot lose to Morgan no, state. No, that's not good. That. I mean, so. If I'm Maine, I'm thinking, all right, if that happened, maybe we've got a chance that potentially we can be higher than what people thought and of us in the preseason. With a lot of the, 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 you know, the number of teams, a lot of it falls in the schedule and getting teams yep. and, and, and seeing maybe you, you don't get the top dogs. I mean, uh, we've seen that in the big sky over the years. Yep. And, so, and, that, and to an extent, we're seeing it in the Valley this year. Correct. Maine playing its first two on the road. I mentioned the FIU game and then here at the Dome coming up on Saturday. League as a whole, I'd say a real mixed bag on oh. the Valley. And actually, I might go the other way. Indiana State getting shut out at home by Eastern Illinois is terrible. Northern Illinois or Northern Iowa, everyone's pick on Saturday outside of Logan on Bison game day. They went stink effort there against, uh, yeah, against Theo Iowa Day State. just had a terrible day passing against Iowa State. Yep. But the loss to getting shut out by Eastern Illinois, I would rank that right up there with losing to Morgan State. With I, Richmond's loss to yes, Morgan State. Okay. I, I, I think well, it's equally yeah. that damaging to the reputation. You cannot get shut out at home no. to an Ohio Valley team, and one who's frankly been okay over the years. I wouldn't but, even say that. Yeah. I'd say they're Lousy. They don't. They haven't been good. Uh, Eastern has been good since Jimmy no. G was there. Yeah, and that was yeah. ten years ago. That's been a long time. That's not. I mean, South Dakota and Mo State losing to SEC and Big Twelve schools. Probably we thought was and handily probably but, thought was going to yeah, happen. That wasn't sixty to seven. Either, no. So no. I mean. Yeah. Southern Illinois got a win over Austin P. So they reversed how last year started. That's important for SIU. Knowing full well what's to come to get a good non-conference win. We don't know how good Austin P is, but that's that's the opposite of what happened to them last season. Well, you're wondering about quarterbacks in Missouri Valley. Yeah. It seems like we have a we talk about mixed bag. 
there's maybe three or four that had pretty good opening weekends, yeah. and there's some that just had just total duds. Yeah. I mean, again, you go to the Indiana State had a returning quarterback. Missouri State still looking yeah, for its guy. No doubt. I mean, they may ro- who knows if they'll yeah. rotate or not. But uh, and Theo Day just off to a miserable not start good. at Iowa State. But you know, he's a veteran. He'll right. he'll probably you know right the ship. Um, Half good, half yeah. not, not so good. I, I just Murray State in the win column. I know they beat Presbyterian, who's a non-scholarship school, but that's feather in the cap for them. And they're, they get their oh. first league game is against oh, Murray? Indiana State. Uh, yes, Murray State. Last before we go, game of the maybe the game of the year in FCS football for the regular season. Brookings Saturday night. For sure. Montana yeah, State, no question. South Dakota State. They played in the semifinals each of the last two years. The home team is handily won. Is there anything you think differently that can happen for the Bobcats now than what happened in December in Brookings? Curious to see how they handle them in the trenches. I mean, for yeah. Montana State, uh, it made the, the final. For the Montana State to topple the NDSUs and South Dakota States of the world in the FCS title chase, you got to do better at the line of scrimmage. I mean, no, no. I, that's just a, that's an easy assumption, but um, that's where it's, and, and South Dakota State has great skill players. Yep. Montana State, you got to defend. You got to defend. You got to be able to defend these guys and 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 hold them at home to what two three <laughs> touchdowns if you can. I mean, South Dakota I, I would State's say, good defensively. You're going to still have to score some points to beat South Dakota State. I mean, it, you got to get maybe the low 30s to win a football game. Montana there. State's going with a true freshman tailback. Yeah. So. Yep. But that's a spot where you can go the true. Freshman. And I'd say SDSU found another stud young wide receiver. Again, I know it was against Western Oregon, but I. I'm really intrigued to see if this is the same old, same old, and SDSU wins by a lot, then we know where the gap is. Montana State plays it close. I'm like, okay, maybe. Maybe there's a chance. And, yeah. and heck, if Montana State wins the game, all bets are off then to see what's going to so happen. So this is the this benchmark season. bowl. I really think so. Yeah. I, mean, I know it's week two, mm-hmm. and people might freak out on me. It's, hey, we're still in September. But this, there's a lot in this game. I really believe that. Either the gap is here or it's here. And I think it might trend that way just in how the last two games have gone. In my mind, SDSU is pretty, pretty good. But the Bison gets set. We'll find out. We know they're pretty good. We're going to find out, see if they can elevate their performance here with a CAA team coming to town. Another first-time opponent, the Maine Black Bears. Yes, the Coastal Athletic Association uh, coming in. Don't forget, of course, Bison game day gets us started Saturday, 10 a.m. on WDAY. And then, of course, the football game kickoff show at 220 with the game slightly after 230 on WDAY. For Jeff Colback, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.